Thank you. I wasn't supposed to be here. Not because I had other plans, but because as an African-American man, born to a single mother in a low-income part of New York City, statistically, I was much more likely to be six feet under than standing on the stage. I'm going to talk to you about adversity, which is something we all face. I believe adversity can become the source of our greatest advantage. It can make us resilient. It can unlock innovation and creativity. And it can make us into great leaders. Today, I'm going to talk about how that happens. And I'm going to give each of you a skill you can start using right away to turn your adversity into your greatest advantage. I started learning about adversity at an early age. And I have a lot of stories from those days. By the time I was 10, I knew what it meant to live without things like heat or electricity. You see, my mother worked 12 and 14 hour days, but sometimes it just wasn't enough. And she needed to make a choice between paying those bills and feeding us. The streets were dangerous, walks to and from school were terrifying, and there was very little hope anywhere. Now, I was very lucky. My life was destined to go in a very different direction. I left those streets to earn an Ivy League degree, followed by an MBA, and ultimately a Fortune 100 career. And through this journey, I was astonished at how my early life adversity had actually become my advantage. Here's an example. We all know the Fortune 100 world is hugely challenging. Tough bosses, enormous demand, incredible pressure. But think about this, compare that challenge to walking home through those streets on your way to a cold, dark home. There is no comparison. For me, nothing was ever going to be that tough again. The demands of the corporate world didn't seem that bad. The adversity of my early life had become my advantage. Now, adversity stories like mine often don't have a good ending. So I became fascinated by the often paradoxical relationship between adversity and advantage. Why is it that adversity causes some people to break and others to break records? I believe it's about how you use your adversity. I believe using adversity to your advantage is a skill that anyone can learn. I think there are 12 specific tools that let you do that, and I'm actually writing a book about it. Today, I'm going to give you the most important one. I call it the adversity, fear, paralysis cycle. And it's why so many people get trapped by adversity. Here's how it works. When faced with adversity, we all feel fear. It's the fear we won't be able to meet the adversity. And that is perfectly normal. The problem is when that fear turns into a paralysis that prevents us from responding productively to the adversity. And that always leads to more adversity. Either the first gets worse, or new adversity arises. Here's a great example. In 2012, Eastman Kodak went bankrupt after over a century in business. Now, some would say because of digital photography. But here's what most people don't know. Kodak actually invented the first digital camera. So what happened? The cycle happened. When presented with the disruptive technology, Kodak's leaders, who only understood the film business, allowed their fear of change to trigger a paralysis that prevented them from leveraging their own invention. They failed to recognize how photography could be reimagined. By the time they came around, the competition had an insurmountable lead. Now, this type of paralysis exists everywhere, and most people don't recognize it, and it costs companies billions. It's the overwhelmed executive terrified of the future and desperately clinging to the past. Or the entrepreneur, so frightened that she micromanages everything and paralyzes her business. Or the entire company, so caught up in blame and finger pointing that they can't innovate. Here's the secret to breaking the cycle. There's nothing wrong with being afraid. It's what we do when we're afraid that matters. The fear you feel when presented with adversity is a signal that you're standing in front of a new opportunity. 
we can actually use that fear as a kind of a springboard from adversity, out of paralysis, and into the opportunity. I call it taking a courageous leap. So it might be the courage to see change and disruption as opportunity, or the leap of standing up for what's right in a difficult situation, or maybe the courage to embrace opposition and criticism as a source of new ideas. Adversity can be the source of your greatest advantage. It can make you resilient, unlock your innovation and creativity, and turn you into a great leader if you use it the right way. It's what's allowed me to stand here today, six feet tall rather than six feet under. I'm going to invite you to start using your adversity right away as an advantage. When you go home tonight, I'd like you to jot down the answer to three questions. Ready? The first is, what's an adversity you're facing in your life right now? Because I guarantee you, every single person in this room has one. Second, this is where the courage comes in, what fear does that adversity bring up for you? And finally, what is a courageous leap you could take out of that adversity into a new opportunity? My name is Jerry Valentine, and I am committed to turning your adversity into your greatest advantage. Thank you very much.